Hey, what's up, man? It's me again. You know, that black dude with the black hat and glasses, right? Coming at you again uh, about another subject. And this subject is uh, self-defense, right? You know, the hardest thing about self-defense. What is the hardest part? of self-defense, right? And uh, the hardest part of self-defense has to be that no one is really truly given the uh, the space, the, the, the right to defend themselves according to how they need to defend themselves within a situation. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, your 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 ability to defend yourself or your right to defend yourself, which I believe self-defense is a universal right. You know, no matter where you're at on this planet, you have the right to protect yourself, defend yourself, right? The problem comes because different locations rock differently. You know, if you're in this location, you can defend yourself to the utmost of your ability. But if you're in another location, because you're you're surrounded by these authorities that have told you that you can only defend yourself this much, right? And then you got those places where they say, yeah, you can defend yourself, but it can only be this much, right? And then it gets even a little, just when you thought it couldn't get even that much more conniving, right? You got places that say, yeah, you can defend yourself, but... You can only defend yourself to this degree. So the problem is that when you're in a, a state that's that's when you're in a state governing, it's being governed. It's uh it's being ruled and controlled by authorities, right? Your the power to defend yourself what without being prosecuted, without being uh subjugated. Or by, to the law, okay, has been diminished. You know, it's been diminished. And if you if you look at any state, you know, whether it's Texas, Alabama, Nevada, I'm just naming states. You know, New Mexico, Montana, Idaho, New York, Florida, Oregon, California. You know, Wyoming, Montana. All the 50 states that make up America, the United States of America, they all have their law books. If you open up these books, within the penal code, it's, it's defined. Self-defense is a definition. Okay? Self-defense is defined in black and white. And, and some places give you a little bit more room when it comes to defending yourself and your family and your property. And some places don't give you that room. And not all this law is written the same. Can you read it? Can you interpret it? Right? So the hardest part about self-defense has to be the, uh, the laws that govern or dictate what self-defense is. Because if you defend yourself within the parameters say this is the definition if you defend yourself within that definition you're safe from prosecution okay but if you if you defend yourself and your defense falls outside of that definition of what self defense is you could be looking at getting prosecuted depending on the seriousness of what took place if someone lost their life, it could go from, you know, justifiable homicide, which are, which is a self-defense, which is a self-defense plea. It can go from justifiable homicide to murder. Like, there's a thin line between justifiable homicide and murder. Okay? So there's a thin line between, you know, righteously defending yourself. And, you know, crossing that line and it's no longer self-defense, it's something else. So 
Most people don't go to law school. Most people really don't know a whole lot about the laws that they're up under. There's so many laws on the books. And when it comes to self-defense, you know how much case law is out there just for self-defense alone? I mean, if you just look at the case law in one specific state, you know, this versus the state of Arizona, this versus the state of Arizona, if Arizona is your state, or this versus the state of California, right? All this case law that you got to read is just dealing with self-defense, right? And mainly what they're giving you is scenarios of things that actually took place. And so you have what takes place on the street, which leads to what takes place in the courtroom, okay? So there was a situation that took place on the street where someone was in a position where they had to defend themselves. And the way that this thing played out is going to play a big part, a big role in how it's going to play out in the court. You know what I'm saying? So if I'm well educated on knowing how far I can take something, which situation I can do this in this situation, I can do that in this situation, I'm able to defend myself like that in this situation, right? If, if I'm already mentally uh, prepared myself and I'm thinking, and that's my train of thought, then I'm in a good position to uh, maneuver around being prosecuted for, to, for defending myself because I'm going to make sure that within any given situation, I know how far to take something. I know what my rights are in that situation. So self-defense is very situational. How many people think about stuff like this? Most people don't. Most people are too busy living their lives, um, you know, taking care of their families, going to work, right? I mean, even attorneys don't break down scenarios and situations like that, right? The only people in this land, and this is the truth, who have occupations where they're actually breaking these scenarios down because it's part of their occupation, it's part of their job, where they're breaking down these scenarios on the street and they're trying to figure out the best way to deal with situations like this. The only people who are really thinking like that, people are who are either, you know, in the security business or the law enforcement. Okay? The other ones who, who think on that line would be martial artists, but not all martial artists actually make that connection. Okay, but people who are into the martial arts, they think like that. People who are into the security business, they think like that. And people who are uh, law enforcement will think like that, right? But most people, they're not thinking about that stuff. That's not even really crossing their mind until they're in that situation. They go for what they know. They take care of their business. They survive or they don't survive. But if they survive, but then they're arrested and they're in handcuffs for defending themselves, now they need an attorney that's going to help them beat the case. Why? Because they crossed the line. They crossed the line that they didn't even know was there. So there's lines. You might not see it, but there's invisible lines. Okay? Everywhere you walk, there are these invisible lines, these parameters. That means that the law has defined what you can do and what you can't do. So I question sometimes, like, does it really take a criminal to be able to figure out how to maneuver and defend themselves and escape prosecution? Does it take a criminal, right? Someone who's criminal minded. Because the average citizen is not going to think on these lines, okay? And see, that's the problem for you guys who like to walk around with the open carry. Look, you're wasting your time. If you're going to do an open carry and you're going to carry a gun, but you don't know how far you can take a situation or you haven't figured out in your mind how you're going to handle different situations within the jurisdiction of the law, you might as well put the handcuffs on you right now and go to jail. Because you're doing it to yourself, right? There's, in other words, for you, it's, it's counterproductive and it doesn't make any sense for someone to have the willpower and the determination to defend themselves, to make preparations to defend themselves and their family, and they don't even know the rules of the game. 
you don't even know how far you can take something in a situation because you don't even know the laws that govern where you're at. So if you stay in Tennessee, you need to know the self-defense self laws in Tennessee. OK, if you stay in Florida, you need to know the self-defense laws in Florida. OK, don't wait until your your back is against the wall and you're fighting the case and you got to rely on some attorney to bail you out. See, it's too late. These are things you're supposed to do ahead of time. If you're in Texas and you're carrying, you need to know the self-defense laws in your state. You need to know how far you can take things and you need to know the consequences for crossing that line. Because there's consequences if you get caught crossing the line. So we're going to use, I'm going to give you an example. It's like jaywalking. Sometimes I wonder, does it take a criminal, right? Because most, most citizens are not going to even think like this. Like I said, people are too busy living their own lives to consider a lot of this stuff. They only consider it when it's too late. So jaywalking. Before you cross the road, you look both ways, right? You make sure that there's no cars coming. You look to the right, look to the left. It's safe to cross the road. You cross the road, you make it to the other side. Okay. So we're going to add another element to the picture. Now you're crossing the road, but you're crossing the road in a place you're not supposed to cross the road. So it's not just crossing the road now. Now it's jaywalking. So you're not just looking to the right and looking to the left. You're looking for police. Because you may look to the right, look to the left, see that there's no cars coming, but you're not crossing the road at the right spot. So if you cross the road, you may make it to the other side, but you got a ticket for jaywalking. Okay. Self-defense is just like that. Self-defense is just like that. It's just like crossing the road in the wrong spot. Okay. You not only got to look both ways. You got to look out for the police because you may be completely in the right for defending yourself. But if you cross that line and it's not within the it's not within the definition of what self-defense is in your law, you will get prosecuted. They will prosecute you and you will do time. OK, you will do time for doing the right thing. You will be punished for defending yourself and defending your family. All because you was ignorant of the law. When they say ignorance of the law is no excuse, they're not playing with you. So the hardest part about self-defense is dealing with the police. 